George Santos was paid for work at company accused of Ponzi scheme later than previously known. So it looks like the Santos guy, I'm sure you guys heard about him already. Now he's connected to a Ponzi and the, the spiral downward just keeps getting worse and worse and worse. And the reason why I, I open with this is I wanna have a chat with you about having the difficult discussion and why it's important to be fair and objective in anything that, that you do. Um, first, this is a comment coming in from someone just a few minutes ago. We'll look at it together. It says, uh, Chris, love you, man, but you gotta know there is no quote fairness or quote truth in politics. Uh, what's fair and true is entirely predicated on which party uh, you, generally you, <laughs> vote for. I learned a long ago that politics is cancer and you will uh, just make you lose viewers, readers, fans. As someone who also creates content for a living, I avoid politics like the plague. People just don't have any interest in being objective when it comes to this stuff. Um, I, I think that's a very reasonable point of view for some people. Always avoid politics and religion, right? Because it gets people uh, upset and angry, these sort of things. For me, I purposely choose uh, these kind of topics because I, I get tired of people just being, you know, essentially cheerleaders and rooting for their said team. And I also think this is also related to financial stuff because this happens to a lot of people. Say, for example, we talk about Tesla. Is um, If you're on the, the Tesla fanboy and fangirl pumper machine, they're just gonna tell you, oh, you know, buy Tesla all day, every day. If Tesla says they're gonna cut prices, buy Tesla because it's awesome. If Tesla says they're buying Twitter, buy Tesla because it's awesome. If Tesla says they're firing everybody, buy Tesla because it's awesome. If Tesla says they're hiring everybody, buy Tesla because it's awesome, right? <laughs> like that kind of stuff, it, unfortunately, it is there's way too much of it uh, on YouTube to where like, you know, every channel is just basically a cheerleader channel. And I get it, guys. That's how you become popular on YouTube is be a cheerleader channel. But I try to give people good information. And as you know, uh, this year I was right about FTX. I was right about Tesla. I was right about crypto, all this kind of things. And, um, you know, I like to live in the world where I'm right, opposed to just I want to feel good. And, and, and it's it's uh, two different things, you know. Um, it is what it is. And, you know, it's interesting because someone wrote a comment also, just another one. Um, this is from Zach saying, uh, I recently discovered your channel and it's so refreshing to hear from somebody who isn't out flexing wealth on us and uh, talking at us, making us believe that um, we become Warren Buffett overnight. Fantastic content. And I'm already learning so much. Thank you for your motivation, Chris. And, and uh, Zach, thank you for watching. This sort of why I'm addressing both these at the same time is, is to me, all this stuff is the same. I'm trying to generally just give you guys good advice and sort of the sort of my mind and philosophy of, of how I navigate this crazy stuff. So the first thing is, the reason why I opened with the Santos stuff is um, this is an obvious case of like, you know, you have this guy, he's now connected to a Ponzi. And if you don't know, he was elected to, to Congress and um, he lied about his, his resume, which is really weird. Um, weird in the sense of like, it was like all kinds of stuff. Um, like he said, he worked at Goldman and, and then Goldman's like, I never heard of the guy. And he said, I graduated from college and the college is like, I never heard of the guy. <laughs> and, and then he said something like um, that, that uh, he was Jewish and Jewish people were like, I never heard of the guy. Like, like he's lying about multiple things. Uh, and, and then it turns out now he's connected to a Ponzi and it's, it's, it just gets worse and worse and worse. And it should be pretty obvious that, you know, a guy like this probably should resign and, you know, should be removed. And, and now there's been a question about whether or not uh, what he did was, was illegal, right? And who knows, right? Because if, if you're donating money to his campaign and he's saying like stuff that um, is, is misleading or thought out lies, right? And you donate money to him, you're, you're probably pretty upset. And so this should, you know, should be an obvious case of like, you shouldn't side or defend this said person. And, and I open with this because this is a really obvious one, right? Um, and you know, his party is still defending him and sticking with him. <laughs> and it's showing how like we live this world of, of crazy cheerleaders that just cheerlead and, and want their team to win. And, and I want you to think about this and people say, okay, Chris, they do that because they want to win and blah, blah, blah. But, but the reason why I, I, I reject this kind of perspective that you always have to just, you know, make up crap to defend your own team or, or whatever is just imagine that you have a job and, and you're, you know, CEO of, of a company, let's say, for example, you're CEO of Disney and let's say you make 10 movies a year, okay? And, and you look at your movies and literally you can see the numbers of your movies. You can see how much they cost. You can see how much uh, revenue they bring in. You can see how much profit you have. Like you have the numbers sitting there right in front of you. And, and you know, as a CEO, then you can say, okay, I can clearly see which is our number one movie, which is our second, which is our, our, our 10th and, and, you know, make business decisions based on numbers, not, not just random stuff or just random feelings. And I just give you one simple example, the same way, uh, if you're a car company and, and you look at, uh, you know, your, your, your Tesla sales and you say, okay, I can see we sell a bunch of this car and we sell this car, but we don't really sell that other car. It should be really obvious then therefore which kind of product that you should be building. And, and this sort of just mindset of like, okay, stay fair, stay objective. 
this is how uh, I like to make decisions. Uh, I, I don't like to make decisions on just, oh, I really, really want something to, to be true. I really want George Santos to be an awesome guy and I really want George Santos to be innocent. And, and I'm gonna tell all my friends that George Santos is innocent. Like, you just come out looking really, really dumb. Um, and, and this is sort of why, you know, I understand my channel feels really different from other people because I, I, I try my best to just give you good advice. And the sad thing is, unfortunately, there's a lot of people out there that don't really want to hear good advice that they want to be lied to and, and made to feel good. I, I'll give you an example. So if, I made a video the other day um, about diet. And the basic idea is that, is that hey, everyone, um, you know, maybe eating cookies all the time, not so great for your diet, <laughs> which I don't think is controversial, right? I shouldn't be. Um, but evidently for some people it is that they're like, Chris, you're such a liar. Uh, you know, cookies aren't bad. You're just Asian and Asian people are young. And, and it just, that kind of talk is just like, are we living in fantasy world or something? And, and you know, maybe more people want to live in fantasy world. And, and if I help promote said fantasy world, I become popular on YouTube, but it's not really good advice. The problem is, and this is just a real thing, and everyone has to make their decision in life on this, is that unfortunately, telling people lies is worth a lot of money. Uh, for example, if I tell everybody that FTX is awesome and Sam Bakeman Freed is, is, is wonderful, right? Uh, I mean, all those YouTubers did that all, all summer, and I was telling you guys, this is a bunch of BS. I mean, I, I, I was like the only one saying that, and you know, I turned out to be right, but true story, those people who told lies about FTX and, and Sam Bakeman Freed being awesome this whole time made a crap ton of money. From that so you know uh, you got to make the decision on, on, on for yourself if you think that's right if like telling lies to get rich like say Santos or the FTX people is the right way to live life or Logan Paul another example Logan Paul made a whole bunch of money off off his fans from, from basically lying to people hey you know crypto zoo is gonna be awesome give us all your money <laughs> and it turned out to be basically a, a, a big Ponzi scam right and now he's trying to dig his way out of it so you know in my opinion um, th this is why I purposely tackled these kind of things things because one is I feel like the world is so full of, of BS uh, out there that there's not that much good info and I, and I try my best to give you guys good info on, on stuff the best that I can. Um, the other thing is too the way that I think about life is um, think about something like this. Uh, you're watching an NFL game right for those of you who like sports and you know they're, they're trying to go for the touchdown at the end of the game there's like a second left kind of thing. You know, you know how these games work. And um, they throw the ball. It looks like they scored, but you're not sure. The refs aren't sure. And so what do they do? They look at the instant replay, right? They literally look at all the evidence they possibly can to, to get the right call. Now, sometimes they make a mistake, right? You guys know this. And, the, uh, you know, evidence comes out. We all can see the cameras for ourselves. And, and, and we can see that clearly, say, the ball is in the end zone and they scored a touchdown. And suddenly, the, if the refs like don't call the touchdown, even though like the photo right in front of us all looks like a touchdown, um, the, the refs are like t total morons, right? So do you understand what I'm saying? Like, this is sort of how I keep my life stress free, and this is sort of why I purposely pick these kind of topics: is look at evidence, look at facts. Does does is a touchdown is is the ball over the line or not? Is it a touchdown or not? Look with your own eyes and be honest about it. Now I get it. If, if you have a certain team in that game, like you really really want the the play to go a certain kind of way, right? If if you're on if you're on the other side of the of of, of the team that was you know um, don't want the the ball to be a, a touchdown, then you're just like oh no I don't see it I I don't see it I don't see it. And you just look like really, really dumb. And, and so I, I guess I, I guess the reason why I'm putting this whole thing out there is, is one, um, I, I'm always going to uh, tackle the uh, difficult, uh, controversial stuff. I'm fine with that, be it political, uh, be it uh, financial, uh, be it anything in the news at all. I'm fine. If, if it's a big news story, I'll talk about it and give an honest opinion. Um, also, too, if, if I ever get anything wrong, right, if, um, you know, I, I look at something and it turns out uh, not to be true, I will address it as soon as I can. I have no problem with that. The same way of uh, the, the sports team, they, they you know, initially called the touchdown. It turns out that they ran out of time and then we looked at the instant replay and it looks like that the, the initial call was wrong. There's nothing wrong with, with trying to uh, get things right, right? right? You, you made a mistake uh, early on and you fix it uh, later and you do the best that you can. So um, I want you to think about like this type of perspective how if you live your life in this way, how this will bleed over into success in business, right? Think about that again, the example of the Tesla and how many cars that you sell and being honest with yourself, being honest with your employees, being honest with your coworkers about sales numbers, these kind of things. And, and I think you'll do great. If, if you live lies um, and you work at company and you pretend like you don't need, uh, you don't read the sales numbers and you pretend like you don't understand, 
you know, which products are popular, you're gonna do really, really poorly because at the end of the day, the, the numbers are the numbers. You, you just can't make stuff up. So hope you understand why I, I offer you perspectives in this sort of way. Do appreciate you guys' time and I'll catch you guys all in the next video.